Members, at the start of business today, I want to inform the House that I wrote to the Speaker of the House of Commons last week to express our sorrow at the tragic murder of Joe Cox, MP. I have asked him to pass the condolences of this Assembly to her parliamentary colleagues, but particularly to her family, who have experienced a heartbreaking loss. In this place, we have too much history of elected representatives from all sides of the chamber being subject to threat or attack, but it makes it no easier to understand Joe Cox's murder. At a time of deep cynicism with politics across the Western world, Joe Cox will now shine out as a model of the role we value as elected representatives, to be devoted to working with our constituents as we seek to improve our society on their behalf. It should be of immense pride to Joe Cox's family that the tributes to her have clearly demonstrated that she was held in high esteem across the political spectrum. At a time when bitter and negative political debate is often more likely to dominate the airwaves, the tributes to her are a reminder of the fact that respect, good working relationships and friendships do exist in politics, regardless of being different parties holding different political views. Perhaps we all need to reflect on why it takes such a tragedy to remind our society of it. As Speaker of this Assembly, I want to underline it is for all of us to defend the democratic right and the importance of elected representatives everywhere to engage with their constituents on the ground despite the personal risks and challenges it may present. However, for today, let us recognise that a family has lost a daughter, a sister, a wife and a mother. And I know I spoke, speak on behalf of the whole chamber when I say our thoughts and prayers are with the family and the friends of Joe Cox MP as they grieve. Let us now move to the matter of the day. Mr David Ford has been given leave to make a statement on the death of Joe Cox MP which fulfils the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If other members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their places and continuing to do so. All members will have three minutes to speak on the subject. I would remind members that I will not take any points of order on this or any other matter until the item of business has been completed. I call Mr Ford. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Last Thursday, I believe we were all shattered to hear the news, first of all in the early afternoon that a Member of Parliament had been attacked, and then in that rather sombre statement from the police that the MP had died. And I believe it's right this morning that as MPs prepare for an almost unprecedented sitting at Westminster, that we also, in this democratically elected chamber, should take time to pay our tribute to Joe Cox, MP for Batley and Spen. And I thank you for the remarks that you've already made about the letter that you have written to the Speaker of the House of Commons on behalf of all of us. I'm sure that's an action which will be endorsed by everybody here today. Of course, Joe Cox was much more than an MP. As you've just said, she was a much-loved daughter, sister, wife, mother and friend. And her death has clearly touched a very wide circle in her constituency and far beyond. The circumstances of the death are well known and do not need to be rehearsed in detail. A Member of Parliament shot and stabbed outside a library where she regularly held a constituency surgery meeting the needs of her constituents, the norm for public representatives in every part of the UK. But what of course has emerged since that tragedy is that Joe Cox was a very exceptional person. Although she had only entered Parliament last year, she had already established a very strong reputation, made a very considerable impression on fellow MPs for her courage, her compassion and her commitment. And that came following a route to Westminster, which was not the easy route that some would have of working for the party and then inheriting a safe seat. She had a substantial career in which she worked on behalf of some of the world's poorest people 
in her capacity for Oxfam. In that, camp in that work, she campaigned on Syria. She worked with people uh, in Sudan. She had a very significant effect on public opinion and on the formation of public policy. I believe she then also showed all that is best in politics by her, was her wish and her desire to serve her own neighbours, the people of the constituency in which she lived, where she had her roots and had been brought up. That perhaps made her more approachable than some MPs. It also maybe tragically made her more vulnerable. Too many public representatives are subjected to a tide of vilification for the work they do. It seems to be a particular issue which affects women in public life, subject to torrents of abuse from men who feel that they have some sort of right to spew out hatred. But what we need to recognise is what has happened in this context. And let us remember, finally, the words of her husband when he paid tribute and said she would have wanted two things above all else to happen now. One, that our precious children are bathed in love, and two, that we all unite to fight against the hatred that killed her. That, Mr Speaker, would be a real living tribute to her. The First Minister, Mrs Arlene Foster. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And this is uh, a very sad day for politics uh, in the United Kingdom. And can I join uh, with others in thanking you for the action that you've already taken in conveying uh, to the Speaker of the House of Commons our deepest sympathy uh, to her colleagues there. Uh, and the murder of Joe Cox was shocking uh, and was undoubtedly uh, a tragic event that will live long uh, in the memory. Thankfully, uh, the murder of a Member of Parliament is a rare event, uh, but we feel the loss all the more because of that. Outside those murders carried out by Irish Republicans in connection with the Troubles in Northern Ireland, this was the first murder of a Member of Parliament since 1812. And perhaps nowhere more than in Northern Ireland, we on all sides of this House understand the pain uh, of the loss of a colleague, whether as members of the Westminster Parliament, uh, members of the old Stormont Parliament, or those more broadly involved uh, in politics here. And though the threat to those uh, involved in politics here is not what it once was, uh, we all must still remain vigilant. However, uh, we must not ever close our doors to those who elect us uh, or become detached from those who send us here. And last Thursday was a dark day for politics because it was uh, an attack on the whole democratic process. But of course it was above all uh, a tragedy uh, for Joe Cox's family uh, and her close friends. We especially remember her husband Brenton and her two young children uh, at this time. I didn't know Joe Cox personally, but it's clear from the many tributes and indeed talking to some of my Westminster parliamentary colleagues, uh, she was a remarkable individual and was going to have a very strong, exceptional, maybe even so, career ahead of her. Our prayers and sympathy go out to all of those people who knew Joe Cox personally in the difficult days uh, that lie ahead. But Joe's murder serves as a timely reminder to all of us uh, involved in politics that despite the difference we may have on one issue or another uh, of the values that are shared right across the political spectrum, and we must never lose that uh, thing that unites us, and that was something very clear uh, that came from her husband. We owe it to her and to ourselves uh, that we conduct ourselves in a manner consistent with the best traditions uh, of democracy. And that doesn't mean uh, that we don't argue or differ, uh, but it does mean that we do so uh, in a more respectful tone than is sometimes the case. And when I took over as First Minister, Mr Speaker, I made a call that we do politics differently. And I think that we have made progress, but let this event uh, help us to redouble our efforts here in Northern Ireland. On this day also, let us remember the words of President Kennedy that civility is not a sign of weakness and that this dreadful event can bring a new civility to politics, not just for a few days, uh, but can be seen to make a new start to how politics is done. Thank you. Deputy First Minister, Mr. Martin McGuinness. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can I first of all thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to say a few words on this uh, terrible murder uh, that took the life of uh, uh, Joe Cox. 
Uh, and I want to thank you also for writing on behalf of all of us to the Speaker, uh, expressing our deepest sympathy and condolences to her colleagues at uh, Westminster. Obviously, in the first instance, whenever a terrible event like this happens, we think of the family. We think of her husband, Brendan. We think of her two children. We think of her parents, her sister, and wider family circle. And I'm sure the deepest sympathy and condolences of all of the members of this House go out to them at this tragic time. Also, sympathy to the, the Labour Party, to her le party leader, Jeremy Corbyn, and to all those within the Labour Party who uh, had a huge respect for Joe. Uh, she obviously was uh, an exceptional person, and to be killed in the way that she uh, was killed uh, was a total contradiction to the goodness and energy that she displayed in her work for some of the most underprivileged people, uh, not just in her own constituency, but throughout the world, because she was an internationalist, she was a feminist, uh, she worked at the cold face with Oxfam, with uh, many people who had suffered as a result of conflict. And for her to be killed in, uh, in this way was absolutely terrible. Uh, I want to thank you also for referring to the fact that uh, in our own circumstances over many years, uh, elected representatives on all sides of uh, this House, from parties on all sides of this House, also lost their lives. Uh, and indeed, in my own party, more so than any other party in this Assembly. But I think all of this has to uh, serve to inspire all of us to ensure, particularly given what we have come through during the course of the conflict here, that we continue to work together with a positive uh, and constructive spirit and in a spirit of generosity with each other to ensure that we continue to move forward and be an example, as I think we have been to many other conflict situations throughout the world in relation to the resolution of conflict. So this is a, a, a very tragic event, but I think it is quite clear that the outpouring of uh, grief and uh, respect and sympathy for Joe Cox and for her family clearly shows that love will uh, won out over hate in the end. Well, Mr. Mike Nesbitt. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, I did not know Joe Cox. I, I would not pretend to have known much, indeed, about her work, either as a member of parliament or previously uh, in her work with NGOs uh, and on causes. But it is impossible uh, not to be deeply impressed uh, by what one has read and heard uh, about that work uh, from the many tributes uh, and obituaries uh, since Thursday's terrible, terrible events. Uh, that said, this is first and foremost a personal uh, and a family tragedy. Uh, and like the other speakers, my thoughts and prayers are with the two young girls uh, and with her husband, Brendan, uh, whose words were so swift, uh, so insured, so inspiring. It, it was difficult not to think of, of Gordon Wilson in the aftermath uh, of the Enniskillen bombing. Uh, but as well as a personal and a family a tragedy, it was an attack uh, on democracy, uh, and it would be remiss not to remember those who have lost their lives uh, as Democrats in this country. Joe Cox, the first female MP, as I understand it, to be murdered. Uh, Robert Bradford, of course, was the first Northern Irish MP to be murdered during the course of the Troubles. In November uh, 1981, he was doing what Joe Cox uh, was trying to do last Thursday. Uh, serving his constituents, holding a surgery uh, in a community centre uh, in Finnegy, uh, in Belfast, uh, gunned down along uh, with a council worker, I believe, uh, a worker from that community centre, uh, also murdered uh, on that very black day. And of course, he was not the only Ulster Unionist to die, nor indeed uh, does any one party uh, have a monopoly uh, on the death of elected politicians uh, during the course of our troubles. So sadly, we know only too well uh, what it is like uh, to see others attack uh, the democratic uh, process. I think the best thing we can do, Mr. Speaker, to honour the memory of Joe Cox is to reaffirm ourselves uh, to exclusively peaceful means, uh, to recognise that in a democracy you will hear things you do not want to hear, see things you maybe do not want to see. Uh, but the way to fix that is not through violence, not through murder, it's through persuasion, it's through debate, it's through belief in your cause 
and promoting that cause in exclusively uh, democratic uh, manner. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, on behalf of the Austrian Party, I thank you for contacting uh, the Speaker at Westminster uh, and totally affirm uh, the sentiment uh, and the condolences that you've expressed on our behalf. I thank you. Call Mr. Colin Eastwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and can I also thank you for uh, the action that you, you took to send our condolences um, to the Westminster Parliament. Uh, I want to add my condolences and the condolences of my party uh, and send them to Joe Cox's family, friends, constituents uh, and party. Uh, I think we, we've all been moved by uh, the manner of her death, uh, but I think even more so uh, by the way in which she lived her life. Uh, Joe Cox was an internationalist, a human rights defender, uh, a loud and determined advocate and voice for the voiceless. Uh, I think, Mr. Speaker, the best legacy that she could ever have hoped to leave uh, would be a whole new generation of people inspired uh, to care about and to campaign for uh, the rights of the downtrodden. Um, it is, of course, uh, it was sad this morning to have to listen also to, um, on radio, on RT radio, uh, Maria McGuinness and Joan Burton talking about uh, the abuse, the online abuse and physical abuse at times that many of our uh, colleagues across this island and across these islands have had to suffer, many of them women, uh, by online trolls. I think of uh, Maria Cahill and other people who every morning wake up to a tirade of abuse. If there's anything that we should do as a result of this murder is we should put our face against that type of activity. Nobody in our society who puts their name forward, who puts themselves forward to do public good and to represent their constituents should have to face that level of abuse. And I think all of us in this House need to send out that message very, very clearly today. Uh, I wish and hope uh, that Joe Cox's family uh, are able to find some comfort uh, in the outpouring of support that they've received in the last number of days. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Ms. Claire Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, like, like others in the room, ha um, didn't have the privilege of knowing Joe Cox, but I have heard and listened over the past few days um, to her legacy, to the work that she's carried out, um, and I feel very inspired that people such as Joe Cox put themselves forward for public life um, and that they can come forward and see value in every human being. Um, from the Green Party, I want to extend our deepest condolences to Joe's family, and particularly her husband, Brendan, and her two young children, who have shown tremendous strength and bravery in the face of such horror. Joe was brutally murdered in her constituency, carrying out her duties on Thursday, and it was a direct attack on democracy. Of course, us in Northern Ireland are no strangers to such actions and intimidation. And I'm glad that so many people are standing up in sympathy and, sh and spreading condolence um, with everyone in Westminster and Joe's family. Um, there's been much talk about the reasons why this has happened, but I think that we should all just be aware and for today take the lead from Joe's family and focus on that which unites us and not that which divides us. Thank you. Well, Mr. Jerry Carroll. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to offer our sympathy and solidarity to Joe Cox's family on her tragic killing. There's been an outpouring of grief across these islands uh, at this tragedy. There's also been a big outpouring of grief and sympathy from people in Gaza and Palestine, a cause that Joe Cox firmly supported. And amongst those campaigning for Syrian refugees, there's been a big outpouring of grief. Joe was a friend of refugees and campaigned uh, in support of those who are fleeing war, uh, poverty and destruction. And I think it's important and appropriate on this day, Mr Speaker, International Day for Refugees, to remember and commend the important campaign and work done by Joe in this field. And as Joe's husband said after her tragic killing, we need to unite against hate. And her death shows the dangers of hate and also the dangers of the far right and those linked to far right and fascist organisations. And it's a reminder to us, Mr Speaker, about the job we still have to do to combat fear, to combat racism 
and the challenge we have in combating those who want to whip up fear, hatred against migrants and refugees. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Jim Allister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This was indeed a, a chilling and a gruesome murder, which has robbed our nation of what appears to have been a very able and blossoming parliamentarian. And our nation will be the poorer for that. It is, of course, an assault upon the democratic process. And as a component part of that here in this part of the kingdom, we feel that too. But above all, this is a loss of a loving mother, two small children, age five and three, the same ages as my own grandchildren. And I could well imagine the unspeakable devastation of the loss of their mother. And whatever else we think of, I'm sure each one of us thinks first and foremost of a grieving husband and bereft children in this situation at the hands of wickedness. As Mr. Nesbitt has referred to, we also have the empathy from past experience of having an MP for our own, from our own shores gunned down doing the very same public service that Joe Cox was doing, Robert Bradford serving his constituents at a surgery, brutally uh, cut down by gunmen who have never been brought to justice. And I trust that all who today empathise with Joe Cox and express the sympathy that they express have done all they can to bring to justice the murderers of Robert Bradford. Some in the past have saluted and glorified in such terror. Last Thursday's events are a salient reminder of just how much of the wrong road that is. And I trust that from this there will emerge a respect for human life, which hitherto some have not had. I trust also this will not be a brutal killing, misused, as some journalists have, for political purposes. This is a tragedy beyond measure for Parliament and for family, and it should not be exploited beyond that. Thank you. Call Mr. Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I first learned of this brutal murder of Joe Cox from my wife. And she spoke to me as a, a spouse with some experience of intimidation and threat. And perhaps because I learned of it first from my wife, first and foremost in my thoughts have been Joe's husband, Brendan, and her children and her family. And they will continue to be foremost in my thoughts and prayers at this time. It is clear that Joe Cox was a brave and courageous woman, dearly loved by her husband, her children, her family, and her colleagues. She was passionate about her family, passionate about her constituents, and passionate about the values for which she stood. Tolerance, inclusion, social and international justice, compassion over hate. And indeed, it is clear that she dedicated her life to the now urgent challenge of extinguishing hate inflaming myth-making in our community, particularly around the issue of immigration. I heard it said this week that we have to be inspired by her courageous and compassionate life rather than intimidated by the evil and hate that caused her death. It was not only an attack on Joe, uh, on her values and on representative democracy, and we therefore do indeed have to heed the courageous and dignified call of her husband, Brendan, to unite against hate in her memory. Thank you. Members, that concludes the matter of the day.